What's going on everyone? Austin John Place here and today I'm going to be going over some questions that you guys had about Pokemon Legends Arceus. <laughs> The Pokemon Company actually didn't answer that many things about this game and it's kind of left really open. So I wanted to make this video going over questions that you guys have. This is going to be a spoiler free video. I'm not going to be talking about unique like regional variants of Pokemon. I'm really going to be answering questions about mechanics. Now there is no data mine out so we don't know if anything is shiny locked. We don't know if the starters are shiny locked. That information is not publicly available at this time. So because of that those questions Sadly, we're not going to be able to answer them. Also, I'm going to try to avoid questions about my own personal opinions about the game. Because my own personal opinions is, this is amazing and might be one of the best Pokemon games ever made ever. Okay, let's get into it. I asked on Twitter, I'm going to make a pre-launch video answering your Pokemon Legends Arceus questions. Leave them below. I'm going to keep it spoiler free. Everything I already covered. Cool. And uh, over, I think, 450 questions were asked, so we're gonna go through these and pick out some good ones. How far into the game do you unlock trading? While trading isn't too necessary in this game because you do get access to the starters later, I would say it's about an hour to an hour and a half in the game after you complete a small tutorial section and then a larger tutorial section, which they're honestly both needed tutorials. You're not gonna go in there and be like, I know what I'm doing. You don't know what you're doing. And it's very refreshing that way. Is it Tedious releasing lots of Pokemon because this game is centered around catching multiples for 100% completion. Or is there a shortcut to release multiple at once? Also, are they auto sorted in the new storage in any way? There's no auto sorting in the stables. This game is not centered around catching lots of Pokemon, just so you know that. It's not made so that you have to catch 50 of every single Pokemon. Everyone who thinks that hasn't played the game. In fact, for every single Pokedex completion, there's kind of two ways to uh, approach it, which is catching several Pokemon or catching them via various means, like make sure you're not seen or a special type, like a, a smaller or a larger or a lighter or a heavier or uh, an alpha version of the Pokemon. Or there's the raising route, which it's evolving, it's using specific moves. So you can complete pretty much every single Pokedex page by only catching one of every single Pokemon if you raise them, but it's your option. You wanna catch more or raise more. Are the final regional evolutions for the starters forced or could you evolve them into their original forms too? There is only the uh, Hisuian variants of the final starters in this game. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 84 asks, how does trading work? Locally, specifically, but online too, does breeding exist? Are there other starters catchable slash gifted? After the credits, you get access to the other starters in the game. This game is designed to be a single player experience and that's really, really true. You can 100% the entire game without trading a single Pokemon to a single person via a variety of items, methods, and means. That means that every single Pokemon, including Pokemon that used to require trade evolutions, you can obtain in this game. Other starters, you can obtain in this game. Do all Pokemon come in different sizes? Except for legendary and gifted Pokemon, yes. They all have just varying sizes in the overworld and I think almost every single Pokemon at some point in the game, you can run into an alpha version of them. How far into the ride Pokemon obtained and how far do I need to get my baby Zora? Uh, Zora is in the, the last part, so it's you're not gonna play through the game with it. And ride Pokemon are obtained fairly early in each of the five regions. Within hour and a half, you can get weirdier and you could be riding around real fast. There is no breeding. There are no held items. Every held item is missing or changed. Everything has changed in this game. The IV AV system is very different. You're gonna find out as you go along. So there's no judge function or anything else. There's just, it, it's very different. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Movement feels really good and there's no multiplayer. How does the game perform in handheld mode for all the players on a Switch Lite? In my mind, there are some games that I like to play with Joy-Cons, usually Pokemon and, you know, simple choosing things. And there are some games that I like with a pro controller. Uh, this is a pro controller game. Because when you're out in the overworld, you need to have fast reflexes for things. There are some times that you feel like you need to hit the D-pad and if you're using Joy-Cons or a Switch Lite, it could be a little difficult. There are some workarounds for that, 
but you're gonna need to balance your, your two left options a little bit. There is no following Pokemon. From what I could tell, there's not really much of a reason to have them out unless there's something I don't know. It's just kind of like they're they're there and they interact with each other and you can talk to them and that's pretty much it. When you die, you lose items. Do you lose anything with your Pokemon? Say you lose a level or you have to go. No, it's just you drop some items. Think of it. It's not like Minecraft where you drop all your items. You drop some items and there's a cool system in place to help find other people's items and people can find your items. You'll learn more about that when you play the game. Customization for the trainer is much more akin to Sword and Shield than it was for like BDSP. You could change individual parts of outfits, colors of outfits. It's, you have a lot of options. Can you expand the home base? So like as the game progresses, do you unlock new facilities to use and stuff? One thing that they did really fantastic. So in the previous games, after you get a badge, you know, new shops would just have new items magically. But in this game, there are special requests from the shop people that after meeting the requirements for that quest to be available, you can then do that quest and then they have new items. So it, it feels much more logical and it makes a lot more sense. That also happens with a large farming area and some other things. So all the progression in Jubilife Village feels natural. Are the Pokemon cries updated? Uh, I feel like they have the newer sounds, but Pikachu and Eevee have their original sounds because the voice actor isn't born yet. This is in the past. And are their environments actually interesting to explore? There's a thing in my mind, which is if I go to a location that seems out of the way, I want to be rewarded for that. In Legend of Zelda, there was either a Korok or a piece of heart, something like that. You do kind of get that feeling most of the time in this game, whether you go there and there's a rare spawn of a Pokemon or a specific alpha Pokemon that doesn't spawn anywhere else or items for crafting. It does feel like going out of the way is usually rewarded. Does it feel like we'll be able to transfer the new Pokemon into and out of other games? I feel like you're going to be able to transfer Pokemon from this game into home. You cannot transfer Pokemon from home into this game, similar to how it was for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And how does it, the combat feel? The combat is very different. But what I really like is moves that you would immediately dismiss in the early game, like quick attack and snarl and things like that. Those moves you may keep into the end game. It's not like you get Thunderbolt and you win. Instead, all of the moves feel very balanced. All of the status conditions are changed and balanced. Moves like self-destruct and rest work very differently. Every move feels viable now is what I'm getting at. It's not like you're gonna immediately get rid of this move for something else. Instead, keeping this move and then leveling up so that this move is mastered and then you get the ability to use an agile and strong style, it can be a real game changer. How difficult is it to find the items to craft the stuff I need? Like Pokeball, medicines, revives, and things like that. In the early game when you're on the ground, you're gonna be running past those rocks all the time and you're gonna, you can just throw out a Pokemon, it goes, it gathers the items and it comes back to you. You could even, if there's three rocks, you can look to the right, throw out one Pokemon, switch to a different one. While that one's doing that, throw out this one. And then while those two are doing that, throw out this one, all while you're just running straight. So your ability to gather materials is so fast in this game. In fact, it very rarely feels like you're gonna be at a lack of materials, but you are gonna be able to buy them if you want. And most of the items, except for like the real premium items, you can just buy in the store if you've upgraded the store enough. This one caught me really off guard. Can your character be induced with all the status effects your Pokemon can? Yes. You can be poisoned and put to sleep and paralyzed. And they either do damage to you or you can't move or you move slowly. Frozen is now Frostbite which works like burn, except it reduces special attack damage. But all of the status conditions on yourself and on your Pokemon 
are all temporary now. So it's not like, you know, you're paralyzed until that Pokemon is fainted. After a certain amount of turns, status conditions go away on their own, including for yourself and opposing Pokemon. It kind of balances out what used to be the, oh, this Pokemon loves me, so it's no longer paralyzed. Now, now it's just natural. When you defeat or catch an alpha, does it spawn again or is it gone forever? It spawns again. Are there a lot of cutscenes like in seventh and eighth gen games, or can you actually walk more than a few feet before being harassed by other characters? You're never going to just randomly be stopped and something happens, instead you need to go to a destination and at a destination there may be some quick dialogue. There's almost no cutscenes in the game, but there is a lot of dialogue. It's a very flushed out story. It's a story that captivated me a little bit. More than 50 hours into the game, I still don't know the answer to the story and I want to know more about what happens in the story. And for that, I need to seek out all Pokemon. It's, it's... It's fun. There is a day-night cycle that happens naturally while you play. I think every day is probably like 15 to 20 minutes in game. So while running through, it's gonna naturally change time. It's not synced to the Switch's clock like it was in Sword and Shield and things like that. So you can play through the game and within one hour experience the day Pokemon and the night Pokemon, which I'm a big fan of. Also, I think there's a lot of things that are linked to the Switch's clock, so this is another game that you should not touch the switches clock. Just hit the sync button before you start playing the game. The mapping system is improved. You can track one main quest and one side request at any point. If you're facing in the direction, you're gonna see a little icon of where that is. In addition, on the map, you could place down, I think it's 20 markers, and then also a waypoint marker. The waypoint marker is also flagged on your screen. So you can have your waypoint marker, your side request marker, and your main request marker. Also, there's no real roots or anything, so if you see that, hey, in this direction is where I need to go, you can kind of just beeline it straight in that direction. It's really nice. All right, this is this is a good one. Is it easy to overlevel in the game or does it flow well? I'm going to make a video going over that a lot more. It is easy to overlevel, but then you're going to experience that you're not overleveled. When you're going through an area, and by the way, the alpha Pokemon are always higher level than everything else in the area. I think their levels also kind of scale a little bit. I'm not really too sure on that. But also, um, you could be you could you could be jumped. Next thing you know, you think you're throwing out a ball at one Pokemon for a battle and three other Pokemon just walk on over. And now it's a 4v1 and two of them are alphas. And if you're not over leveled, you're going to die really fast. The agile style system is very well balanced that you're not going to be using it all the time. Every move has significantly reduced PP. So while you're exploring, you can't just spam it all the time. And there's a huge penalty for just using strong style. If you choose to use strong style, then the opposing Pokemon can do an agile move and a regular move. So essentially it's like uh, a 50 damage and a 35 damage, or it's probably 50 and 40. So now they're hitting you with 90 damage. Meanwhile, your 60 move got boosted up to 75 and it's not really a good trade-off. So the agile I think is really helpful. And then strong is mostly just for, you need that little bit extra for that finishing move. You can nickname Pokemon anytime you want. How many videos do you have ready? Recorded, this is the first. I have 23 videos planned so far. While throwing a Pokeball, you can move around. It's kind of like, a, think of it like a first person shooter that while you're moving around, you just throw out a grenade. Feels like that. Can you spot a shiny Pokemon in the overworld? Yes, they they have an icon, they have a sound. It's very obvious when there's a shiny Pokemon. It's it's hard to miss. Even if you're on bird back and you're in the air, when a Pokemon spawns in, you'll know. So it's impossible to miss, which is really nice. And I'm gonna be talking about the new Pokeballs in a separate video. Does the new formula make you wanna try out Pokemon in your team beyond your normal favorites? Example, Switch take away the National Dex force me to use a different team. So as I mentioned before, to complete a Pokedex page, you can either catch a lot of one Pokemon or you can raise up Pokemon, which honestly most of them can be done in 10, 15 minutes. So it's not really that much of a grind to complete a Pokedex page once you have that Pokemon. But unlike Brilliant Diamond, Shine and Pearl that had 150, 200 Pokemon, I, I forgot exactly what the dex was. Every route that you went into, you feel like you saw the same Pokemon. Instead in this game, there's 
240 ish, but you see all 240. So in the starting area, you're gonna see Shinx, and you're gonna see some higher level Luxios, and you're gonna see a big Luxio that's very scary, who's level 40, and you're gonna see some Lux Rays there, and you're not gonna be able to catch him as soon as you start unless you grind a whole lot. Instead of it just seeing Shinx everywhere, you're seeing all three of them. So it being 240, it feels like there's so much more than a previous game that would have 240, but instead in one route there's only two or three different Pokemon. Know what I mean? How are the graphics? Like, does it run well? This is Sword and Shield, and it's slightly improved. It's not like a real breathtaking thing. Some scenes are very nice. The grass and trees are much better from Sword and Shield. The water is much better from Sword and Shield. And the sky is much better from Sword and Shield. It's just generally a little bit better than Sword and Shield. You playing the game, especially on an OLED, oh, looks so much better than the trailers you've seen. Because I feel like for their trailers, they downgrade the quality to compress the file. And then YouTube also compresses it more. Like, grass never looks good on YouTube because of their algorithm that they use to compress the video. You see Mark has uh, Brownlee's video on, I uploaded this video a thousand times to see actually how much compression they do. But it... It feels better in your hand, but again, you're not playing a Pokemon game for the graphics. You're playing it for the gameplay, and the gameplay is great. Can you ride shiny Pokemon? No. Partner Pokemon that you get to ride around on, like Braviary and Basque Legion and them, they, it's just an instance, it's just a model, it's not a specific Pokemon. You can obtain your own, and you know, you can get it shiny, but the one that you ride around will never be shiny. What are your personal thoughts on the game? How did you feel playing it? As a longtime Pokemon fan, is this a step forward for Pokemon? Lots of things are changed. Lots of things are taken out. Lots of things are reworked. They're breaking away from the old Pokemon formula a lot. And honestly, after how many games? It feels refreshing. It really does. I don't know if this is what I want going forward all the time, maybe a mix of the two, but just after game after game after game of the exact same thing, this feels good. Are there any new moves that aren't exclusive to the new Hisuian form slash evolutions? The game only introduced, I think, like eight or nine new moves that are exclusive to mostly the Hisuians, but a lot of the moves have been changed. Great example, there's no growl. Okay, you don't need growl anymore in the game. Every single status move does both special and physical. What I mean by that is, if I do sword stance, it says that my offensive stats have been changed. So that means that my physical attack and my special attack are both raised for a temporary period of time. And it's only raised by one stage. You can't stack it. Instead, it just replaces the duration. So if you do it as a regular move, it's two turns. If you do it as an agile, it's one turn. If you do it as a strong, it's three turns. Uh, now, if you think about Calm Mind, Calm Mind used to only raise special attack. Now it raises special attack and physical attack for the same duration. So Calm Mind and Sword Stance are the exact same move now, except one is, you know, done by psychic -y Pokemon and one is done by swords -y Pokemon. Know what I mean? Yeah, D every move is gonna feel new. Uh, so good. Which Ninetales variant is available in the wild? The Cantonian is in the wild. There is a gift of Lolan. Well, it's not a gift. You have to complete a quest and then it's a reward. There's a reward Alolan, and it's one of a very small amount of Alolan variants. It's going to be obvious who who who's going to give it to you. Number of pastures. What does our storage limit look like? It works similar to the previous games as far as having Pokemon in certain boxes, but there's also a threshold that I don't know in order to increase your boxes. We'll find out. Uh, someone asked this before. There is a mass release button but you unlock it later. Do you need to catch all the unknown forms to complete the Pokedex entry? I think you have to catch five or 10 to complete the Pokedex entry, but also unknown works very differently. It's its own side quest and they're placed and they're they're like fun little Easter eggs that you, they actually feel like Easter eggs. And they're in very obscure places. It's, it's a lot of fun and it's gonna be a challenge to find them all. 
But that's not the hard thing to find in the game. No, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, that's Spiritomb. Given that there's no held item slash abilities, how is combat? My team gravitated a lot more towards Pokemon that have immunities. A dark type, a steel type. Ground feels very overpowered without Pokemon having levitate. Ground feels so powerful in the game. But also at the same time, they remove things like, like Garchomp doesn't get Earthquake. I think it's most powerful ground move is Bulldoze. I don't think there is an Earthquake. Maybe he has it. I would need to check. Combat is more about statuses and buffs than it is raw damage. So you going through a single player game. Oh, great example. Uh, someone on 4chan was like, oh, they ruined Stealth Rocks. No, they didn't. You're never going to use Stealth Rocks in Earth mainline Pokemon game. How many trainers do you experience that have more than one Pokemon? Or is it actually even worth throwing out Stealth Rocks? Like for the Elite Four in BDSP? Yes. Did I use it any other time? No. But now entry hazards work much differently because there are no entry hazards. So Stealth Rocks and Spikes, now they're uh, Splinter. Splinter damage. And splinter damage is calculated based off of the same way that Stealth Rocks was, but Stealth Rocks is now also a move that does damage. So it's a 40 damaging move with a secondary effect. It's, it's like I said, every move is reworked and everything feels much more balanced now. And no held items during your single player adventure of any previous Pokemon game, did you have held items? Or was it more of a, oh, here's a berry. But now, if I, I can do Quick Attack and use a potion in the same turn, because Quick Attack is a quick, high priority, low damaging move, so I still get some damage off and it's refreshing. Are the missions repetitive? In a lot of games like this, it feels like there's a lot of fetch quests. Some of the missions are just, hey, did you complete this Pokemon's page yet? So when you talk to the person to accept the quest, you could talk to them again and the quest is done. Some of them require going out and doing a very specific thing. Some of them have fantastic rewards. They're very varied. It's not very repetitive. Know what I mean? It's not like, you know, finding all 900 Koroks and it's only via, what, 10, 12 different means with a couple variations each. It feels good if you decide to grind all of the side quests at once. It's not fun. It took me, I think, six or eight hours of just straight gameplay of just doing side quests and that didn't feel fun, but it helped me complete my Pokedex more. So, in addition to the rewards that I got, I would recommend doing the side quests that become available soon as they become available. Because sometimes the earlier quest rewards become irrelevant later in the game. Alright, that's enough of the questions for now. I have lots of videos planned for later, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea at some things that weren't really explained. If you found this video helpful and you want to follow all of my Pokemon Legends Arceus content, Arceus content, then there's going to be a lot. Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.